Welcome back to the Arrival Van series. And on this episode, we're actually gonna show you something that Arrival got right. And it is hidden inside the front of here. It's something quite magical. To be exact, it's the finished version of this, which looks rather complicated, doesn't it? But it will be explained throughout this episode on my magical whiteboard. So hit that subscribe button and let's go. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dig out the new version of this out of the front of the arrival van and then strip it apart because I'm expecting it's gonna be hiding some rather interesting secrets. Now the whole front panel is off. This is the box that I have been looking for. So I'm hoping it's a couple of bolts and we'll get through and undo all of these fittings. As you've seen, I've got everything out of the arrival van. So this is what they call the HVAC, which is heating, ventilation, air conditioning. So basically it's gonna be taking in heat from different places, it's gonna be doing AC, and it's gonna be using that to cool and heat all different parts of the vehicle. Now, now we get a bit technical. It's sort of Chris tech time again, like we used to do back in the day. And I'm gonna sort of explain what used to be done and what an EV conversion company people tend to do, and then what the OEMs are now starting to do and why Arrival got something right. Because this is, 2020. Tesla didn't start doing this really until 2022 was when they released it. So they were actually at exactly the right place on their HVAC journey at the time of building the prototype. As you can see, this does look extremely complicated. And most vehicles are going to have an AC system with a compressor, condenser, dryer, evaporator. That will do your AC in your car. In addition to that, they'll then have a PTC heater put inside of there. Think of a PTC heater as like one of those three kilowatt ones you plug in at home with a blow heater. That's pretty much a PTC, pretty inefficient. That would normally sit in the front of the car to heat you up as a person. And then it'd have a circuit for the battery pack, which would be a radiator, a pump, circling through the battery, and potentially an inline PTC to heat up the batteries when they are cold. And then it'd have the same thing again for the drive system. So radiator, pump, drive unit, motor, inverter. But they wouldn't have any heating on that because it doesn't require it. So now, Let's open the lid on this, see exactly what's going on inside compared to this thing. So looking at this thing, it actually has a name on here, which is Burgestorm Europe. So this may not have actually been made by a rival, but it may have been brought in to use in their vehicle. Now, from what I understand, also we have HV in and out, low voltage, lots and lots and lots of connectors. They have another pump here, even though I'm probably expecting to find something inside, and they have another valve here for some reason as well, so maybe they added to it as they went along. But in the back of here, R123YF AC, and I'm presuming inside here, yep, there's an air conditioning fill slash drain point, meaning I'm expecting inside here there's AC, but what I'm hoping to find is that it's a completely sealed system that uses the coolant from the rad pack to basically act as the AD AC condenser, which would be pretty cool if that's the case. Now, let's get into here, shall we? Would you look at that? Now there's an awful lot going on inside of here. We have a PTC heater just here. Now, this will heat coolant uh, for the battery pack mainly. It, may, it will, probably won't do it for the motor, but mainly heat the battery pack up. So when you're going to a rapid charger, it's already at the right temperature, which a lot of cars these days will preheat on the way to rapid charging. Um, I think there is one, two, three, four. It looks like four, maybe five valves in here as well to basically change directions of coolant. There then is a dryer and an evaporator and a condenser, all in this little spot just here. Now that means they can basically take AC in. Uh, that AC that comes in can then be used for cooling down the coolant to keep the batteries at a certain temperature or the drive system at a certain temperature. But they also use the coolant probably from a radiator at the front of the vehicle to then draw the heat away from the compressor gases. So the AC system then operates. But the benefit here is that all the AC system is inside this one box. There's no other parts outside of this box AC-wise in the vehicle. So this could be pre-gas, pre-done, and then fitted on the production line. Obviously all of these were quick release, so it makes all the pipe clipping really straightforward and easy. Um, and then you've also got your AC compressor just there. 
which is a high voltage AC suppressor, and then there's two cooling pumps buried down in here, which looks like they split off and feed multiple things from each pump. Now, I don't want to spend hours boring everyone of how this stuff works because there's a hell of a lot going on in them, but what I do have is a Tesla unit from 2021. This is a Tesla unit. Yeah, a little bit different. Obviously, they had the AC separately, so they've actually got an AC system which will have a condenser at the front of the vehicle and all the other stuff that will plumb into here, so all of that bit there is gone. Um, and then they do have output from the AC to cool down the battery pack and stuff. And on here, they then have two pumps, one either side. Now, these pumps are actually three-phase AC pumps, which is quite cool. But valve-wise, instead of having five valves, like I'm seeing here, they have one five-way valve. That is it. And right now what you're seeing on your screen is this design laid out on paper and how it operates, because it's actually quite clever. You can basically do a closed loop system which runs both pumps and loops all the coolant through the same system. So it can scavenge heat from the motor into the batteries, um, or you can super cool the batteries with AC and then use the residual battery heat as a thermal mass to cool down the drive system. Or you can run as two separate systems where you basically have motor cooling and battery cooling, battery cooling with AC or without AC. Tesla were also running a PTC heater in line as well on this system, just to make sure they could heat the batteries up if necessary. Now this is like 2021-ish, and then after that they moved to a whole new system, which is slightly similar to that, but they built like a really nice cast metal bit with all the piping in which I might have one I can show you. Now this is what Tesla went to in the newer Model 3s. Now, as you can see, it's still got everything AC-wise, the condensers, the heat exchangers, the expansion, as well as obviously lots of ins and outs and all the pumps built into it and the cooling. But the main thing is this is a heat pump. So here, there is no PTC because it can use the compressor to generate heat as well as generate cold, which makes it pretty damn cool. Changing topic for one minute. These are the 24 watt batteries obviously I found in the back. But I did find some more in the front. Let's have a look. Now you can clearly see the mountain of piping that was coming down into the unit. But look just there. Yep, well, there's a Yasa battery, 12 volt. And just here, there's a little DC to DC. So there's a high voltage link to DC to DC and a 12 volt battery. And guess what? There is no way of getting to that without dropping out what I did or taking out the entire rad pack, which is pretty damn stupid. Separate to their battery location choices, this was actually really good, very advanced, and all around a great idea that would have made the vehicle a lot more efficient, which when you have a van that is fairly brick-shaped and weighs quite a lot, Efficiently, efficiency, if I can say that correctly, becomes absolutely everything. Now, you've made it to the end of the video, so thank you so much for watching. And I hope I haven't bored you. Obviously, this is a lot more technical than we normally go. But it was something I really wanted to show because I have been a bit probably mean on the arrival products over the last couple of episodes. And there was something there that was actually really, really good. Now, if there's anything else you want me to dive deeper into on the arrival vans, please reach out in the comments and make sure you give me a thumbs up. And on the next episode, I actually have some help and we are going to try and get that UPS van to drive. Fingers crossed it will drive. I just don't know yet.